Hi, and welcome to this video on network telemetry. My name is Rida Laichi. I'm part of Nokia IP consulting team. This short video is part of a series of video on network telemetry topic. In this particular video, I will address how GNMI can replace existing methods and protocols used today in retrieving network information. I'm sure many of you are familiar with network telemetry and data collection. In this video, network telemetry is referenced as a mechanism to retrieve data from remote network devices. It collects different type of information, such as network statistics, object states, configuration, inventory, logs, or any other type of data a network operator would like to retrieve on the device. There are three ways to retrieve data from the network. The first one is data polling mechanism where an application pulls directly the device on a regular basis or on demand to retrieve the information. The second one is event-driven information. For specific network events or an action, the device will send the information to the application. The third way is streaming the data directly from the device. Both the data polling mechanism and event-driven method are still required in today's network to cover cases such as monitoring or troubleshooting. However, network telemetry streaming provides flexibility to the application in retrieving the information from the network. It gives control to the application on when and what type of information to get from the network. It also provides information in a real-time fashion for the application to consume. There are different implementations of streaming information from the network devices. For the purpose of this video, we will focus on the gRPC implementation, which is the Google Remote Procedure Call. This implementation leverages the gRPC on the client or collectors and the gRPC on the router to subscribe and stream the data from the router to one or multiple collectors. So the gRPC streaming will require subscription between the collector and the router to initiate and maintain a connection and to provide enough details on what type of information to stream from the network to the collector. If this is a dial-in implementation, then it is the responsibility of the collector to initiate this, this subscription. For the dial-out implementation, the router is responsible to initiate the subscription. In this example, the data structure in the router is described in the Yang model that can be described in XML or other type of models. By default, the gRPC encoded data in a protobuf, but other encoding methods are supported such as JSON. The data then is streamed over transport protocols whenever the data becomes available in the router. The outcome of the streaming process is a collection of data that can be used by many applications such as reporting, monitoring, alerting, or troubleshooting. The format of the data is different from the format collected by other methods, but the value or the content can be the same as the one collected by different protocol or different method. For example, if we're retrieving interface stats for a particular interface on a particular time frame, the value retrieved by streaming will be the same value retrieved by other collection method. Let's take a look at the protocols and encoding used in streaming by gRPC in comparison to NetGov or SNMP, for example. The telemetry data structure is modeled and described using Yang. Instance of the data can be encoded in XML, JSON, or protobuf, depending on what protocol to use to retrieve the information. The protobuf is developed by Google and has the same purpose as XML or JSON, which is to provide a way to serialize and deserialize structured data. Protobuf uses binary messages format, which makes it smaller in size than XML and simpler to use. It can also provide better performance than JSON in some data collection and telemetry use cases. So in case of NetConf, the encoding will be JSON or XML. And for the GNMI cases, the encoding will be protobuf. GNMI can also support JSON encoding, but it may not be ideal in data collection and streaming, given the performance of protobuf mentioned earlier. So the gRPC network management interface, GNMI, is built on top of gRPC framework, and it provides API capability to read and write data from and to the device. As you can see, it extends beyond just retrieving the information from the network devices. It can also be used for configuration to the device 
but for the purpose of this video, we're only focusing on the capabilities of the GNMI in terms of retrieving the information and streaming information from the network. The current slide illustrates two approaches to network information retrieval. On the left side, we see various protocols, technology used to retrieve information. On the right side, we're only using one single technology, which is GNMI and its capabilities. As you know, using multiple protocols and technologies can be complex and hard to maintain and may slow down your network improvement and upgrade. But it's also result in a different data format from each collecting methods, which create challenges for the consuming application to normalize the format or to cross-reference information coming from two different protocols, for example. However, using a single protocol will result into one model and makes it simpler to store and easier to consume by the application. So in addition to the subscription capabilities of the GNMI, which provides real-time information from the network devices to the application, the GNMI GET capabilities can be used to address the on-demand data retrieval, which is necessary in some cases such as troubleshooting or pre-provisioning. Also, the performance and the scaling of the collection can be a big advantage when using GNMI over other protocols, for example. So in summary, I think GNMI as a single interface can replace existing technology for network telemetry by providing better and reliable data delivery and an easier way to store and consume the information. Thank you for watching this short video. I hope it was useful. If you have any question or would like to have more information, please do not hesitate to reach out by using the contact information provided here.